So welcome to today's Scene Sterling Pathways session uh, with Goforth Sterling and Arch Creative. Um, and we're talking today about animating Sterling's High Street with artwork and augmented reality and a uni unique call out to artists in the Sterling area. So um, I'd like to welcome Danielle and Charlotte, um, Danielle McGrory from Goforth Sterling and Charlotte Mulvey from Arch Creative. Arch Creative. Um, and I just wondered if you might introduce yourself in a bit about um, the organizations that you come from and and maybe just tell us a bit about how this idea developed so danielle would you kick absolutely off so hi everyone thank you very much for coming um i am delighted that we have a number of people today um and it's also lovely um that we have a lot of females um so go forth sterling um is our business improvement district of sterling um for those that aren't fully aware of what a business improvement district is um, we are uh, basically, in essence, uh, a, you know, a private not-for-profit company that's set up um, to represent, look after, support the businesses in Stirling as much as possible. Um, it's the businesses in Stirling within a specific geographical location. So within Goforth Stirling's um, boundary or district, as we call it, the bid district, um, we represent close to 400 businesses. Um, so um, we have three main objectives um, at Go Forth Sterling. Um, as with you know, most bids all over the country, um, there's about 337, I think, bids um, countrywide right now. They're actually worldwide. Um, but you know, in the UK and within Scotland, I believe the latest figure is there's currently 37 bids. Um, so the, the bids are kind of working hard to deliver, you know, to increase footfall to provide um, business support um, and to improve the trading environment for businesses in the area. Um, so one of the key objectives that Go Forth has just now that this project is about is looking at, especially important um, in light of the pandemic, is looking at the vacant units in the Stirling city centre. Um, we have, you know, a, a number of vacant units um, there are more now because of the pandemic, um, you know, and we can only imagine, hopefully not, but, you know, we probably will end up having a number more within the city centre. So how do we deal with those vacant units? Um, how do we have them um, seen as an opportunity rather than just, you know, the V board and an empty site that is getting dusty inside? It's not very attractive um, for those visiting the town or those that already work in it. So how can we almost have them not disguised, um, just tidied up, made look better, um, and that show Sterling streets as you walk around um, as being inviting. So, you know, those could be simply just covered up with vinyl. Um, these, there's a lot of projects all over the country, and Sterling's done them before, where, you know, we cover the windows with um, historical stories or just other, you know, important um, initiatives about Sterling. Um, but in the summer, we've, this has been kind of bibbling for a while, um, how does go forth, you know, go ahead with this? Um, and in the summer, I came across a project that Bid Leicester did. Um, so Bid Leicester um, is a very established bid. In comparison to go forth Sterling, you know, we are only in our third year. Um, so we're fairly new. Um, sorry, just to cover as well, bids run in five year terms. So we're, we're at the other side of our, our first term. Um, so Bid Leicester has introduced um, this summer, possibly just before, Charlotte will confirm, um, yeah. uh, something called Street Stories. Um, and what they did to tackle their vacant units was introduce artwork on these vacant sites and create a street a trail. So a trail around the city that encourages footfall, encourages interest, um, and not only just artworks, it's artworks that create almost a story tying to um, the, you know, the town or the city centre. And then an extra dimension that really interested me about you know, the Leicester project that I saw um, was all of these um, windows had a QR code. Um, and if you download um, an app called Graphio and scan the QR code, the artwork comes to life. You know, you're viewing via your phone, it's jumping out at you, it's animated, um, and it's something so much more than just putting artwork up on every window. Um, Kevin and I had a, a good chat about it last week and we discussed it. We wanted the windows to be um, 
you know, the design to be coherent. And um, we wanted, that's why we think it's better to do it as part of a plan and a trail of something like the Street Stories brand that we've chosen to use. Um, so that, you know, the vinyl's all put in the same way, the artwork's all presented in the same way. We are very sorry, um, I'll also have a dog issue probably. Um, we will have, um, you know, the, the animation all works in the same way. But what will be different and unique about each window um, will be the artwork. Um, we are looking for different mediums, different ideas, um, of course, different artists um, that will all make um, these features on every window in the trail around the town. Um, so our plan is to do eight windows in town so far. That's what we have, um, you know, the initial budget for. Um, and I can only hope that this being a roaring success, we will go beyond and you know deliver the project on a number more vacant sites as they become available. So um, I will hand you over to Charlotte for a little bit more information um, on the specific Street Stories brand, um, but I'll welcome any questions anyone might have um, and I really look forward to seeing your work and how we can incorporate that. So just to cover as well, in case anybody's um, not sure, what we are looking for from the artists is um, use of their work, um, use of any of your work really, um, to be able to, we will format it, we will put it onto the vinyl, we will worry about the animation, well Arch will, um, we'll worry about the animation, everything like that, and it's a way that we can showcase, you know, local artists work, and it gives you the opportunity as well to see, you know, your, your work come to life in a completely different way, um, by seeing the animation and whatnot. And anyone that's not entirely sure on how the animation actually looks, the best way I've described this from my own experience of seeing it um, on the other project um, was it was almost like Pokemon Go. You know, this the, the the how Pokemon Go took over the world a couple of years ago and everyone was running about with an app and they were appearing in front of you. Literally, when you're looking through your um, device screen, um, you know, things are, are, are coming to life. Um, and we don't know what that's going to look like yet until we actually see the work and see how that can we can make it come alive. So every, every window will be different. But anyway, that's that's the kind of gist of it. Um, welcome to as many questions as you wish after. And I'll hand over to Charlotte that will explain a little bit more about the actual street stories, um, you know, the brand and how that worked for them with our previous project. Thank you. Thanks, Danielle. Um, so yeah, I'm Charlotte based um, at Arch Creative here in Leicester. Um, we are a full service design agency um, specializing in branding, web, digital, um, video, print, advertising. Um, so yeah, pretty much cover loads of different um, areas in the design industry. So as Danielle mentioned, we were originally approached by Bid Leicester um, unfortunately, I think it's a bit of an issue across, you know, city centres all over the UK and, and sort of further afield um, that, you know, sadly retail shops are closing down. Um, so originally we predominantly focused on two specific streets um, and they just wanted something innovative, something exciting, something that was going to be safe, um, hopefully just to bring that foot flow back into the city centres. Um, and like Danielle mentioned, it's, you know, they wanted something that, yeah, you know, we can put up artwork and visually it looks amazing. Um, but it's also adding that exciting element of AR um, that really stood out about the Street Stories concept that we developed here at the agency. Um, you know, the excited Bid, Lest uh, Bid Lester, sorry. Um, so, yeah, that was all great. We developed the concept here. Um, they were over the moon with it. So then pretty much what we're doing now. Um, we worked really, really closely um, with Leicester-based artists. Um, some of them wanted to commission pieces, which was, you know, absolutely brilliant. Whereas um, the majority of artists used here in Leicester actually repurposed existing pieces. Um, and then to bring that story element side of the project to life, um, we just pretty much joined the dots with those pieces. And we've got an in-house video team here that actually brought those artworks to life. So we work closely with you guys, um, you know, just to get a real understanding about your piece, um, how, you know, we're actually gonna, you know, turn that into a really exciting animation. Um, and then we then go on 
to the print side of things. So as Danielle mentioned, at the moment, we're looking at eight units and that's what we've secured so far. And with the help of Graphio, um, so that is an independent app, augmented reality app. So you would go to the unit, scan the code. It's all completely free. Um, you'd literally hold your phone up to the artwork and yeah, the magic happens. <laughs> um, so yeah, here in Leicester, it's just, you know, gone from strength to strength. Um, I think because we have used such, um, you know, a diverse variety of artists, um, it's just, you know, really welcome into all different audiences. So we used, um, I can share the links with you as well, just so you guys are familiar and you can see exactly what we've executed here in Leicester, just to give you a flavor of the different um, variety of artists. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much sort of street stories here. But as I say, yeah, it's gone from strength to strength. We've got um, actually 10 units here in Leicester. So it's just slightly bigger, but um, yeah, it's, yeah, hopefully gonna be as much as a success for you guys as it, as it is here. So my role in this project will just be to kind of oversee and execute the project and just use my expertise and my knowledge um, and just experience of, of how things um, you know, rolled out here in Leicester to to bring it to you guys. Thank, thank you very much. I had a couple of questions that might get us kickstarted, and I'm sure there'll be others. Um, yeah, so first, I thought one question might be, and I think this is probably really useful for the artists here, is when they're thinking about submitting some examples of their work and thinking about the kind of work, obviously we're interested in telling stories about Sterling, and maybe Danielle can, can kind of feed in a bit more about the kind of themes and, and what would work in terms of the bid but just in terms of like actually selecting an artwork or putting forward some artwork what are the kinds of artworks um, or the kinds of qualities that artworks might have that would lend themselves well to AR and to being scaled up on this kind of level and what are the things that might be more challenging or difficult and people might want to think about you know um before they, they, they maybe select or put work forward because i'm sure some things as with everything translate really easily and other things are probably a little bit more uh complex to manage so i just wondered if you had any tips or thoughts or um experience of doing this and, and what and and i suppose as well what the process is like um bringing artwork to life charlotte do you want to explain how um how you or even the, the type of artworks that you selected um, for the Street Stories project. From a bed perspective, um, I am just really looking forward to seeing all kinds of artwork. I, I, it, we were quite specific in the brief that we didn't want to say you know, historical or environmental or it had to be um, a specific medium. I would be thrilled if we were able to deliver the project with you know, a, a variety of things, a variety of themes, and it might not be Sterling related, um, but you might be, um, and it might just tie into the story that we then create, um, obviously with your oversight, um, but, you know, we, we are happy to tie the story together to make it, you know, coherent and flow as part of the trail. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, in terms of the actual artwork that we will select, um, I would just I just love to see a variety and um, you know when mosaic was mentioned earlier I thought great you know we've not just got um just one type we, you know I'd, I'd just like to be able to display as much as possible um, and I think that'll be what's key to the project in terms of what's best for um augmented reality I'll pass over to Charlotte because she'll know best the, uh, the reason as well that we're using the street stories brand um, is because we think that that will take off in other bids throughout the country um, and you've got experience and I'm sure there was a, a lot of um, obstacles you had to overcome in the first project and you're ready to then take on the obstacles that we'll have um, but you know being able to move forward with Street Stories a brand I think is so strong so um, Charlotte will give you a little bit more insight into the augmented reality side of things. Yeah, so like I say, huge variety um, of artists. So, you know, anything from, and um, we work with a guy, Tim Fowler. So he specializes in really colorful, abstract portraits. Um, so it was just bringing those different layers and elements to life through the augmented reality. And um, we also had another window. Um, so our 
company director here actually wrote um, a book to support the NHS. So that was a real child, you know, fun, family friendly animation that came to life with um, sort of frogs and deers, sort of, you know, popping out of the window. Um, we also had a lady, um, Chris. So her process was basically shining light through different layers and different materials to then build up her artwork. So it was a real, you know, diverse range. But yeah, like I say, we do have some really, um, you know, talented in-house animators here. So what the route that we're hoping to take is to basically pick out layers um, of your existing piece or your commission piece um, and then yeah, bring it to life through animation. And then as part of that animation, we also include um, small amounts of copy that relate back to your, your story. Um, so yeah, the animation all in all is around sort of 10 to 15 seconds long. Um, so it's fairly short, but it, it's definitely powerful enough to, to engage audiences. And then on the actual window itself, um, there'll obviously be an artist's profile, more about your story, um, obviously links to the website so people can obviously find out more um, you know about the street stories project itself as, as well as the artists work involved. Brilliant thank you and it's great you know this is one of the things that I think was really exciting when I first met with Danielle last week and we talked about um, this focus on kind of being open to what you bring to the table and obviously we've got everything here from aerial dance to mosaic uh, and I don't know what all of you do, <laughs> so portraits um, and, and traditional oil painting. So we can hopefully represent a wide range of, of different practices and demonstrate what Sterling does, which is a lot. Um, and I think the other things that ties really strongly into other work that Danielle talked about, about promoting independent businesses um, and in Sterling and recognizing that you guys have got a creative practice, but also, you know, this is your, your business. And, and, and so the opportunity to be a bit more visually prominent in, in, with your creative practice and for your story to be sort of connected um, to the bed and to these empty shop windows kind of maybe um, uh, helps to tell a story about the arts and creative sector and, uh, in Sterling that often you know, people might not see unless they go into the Made in Sterling shop or if they go into, you know, some of the other sort of commercial art galleries. Um, so hopefully we'll reach new audiences and excite people with what our talent is in, in Sterling. And so that's really exciting. Um, and, and I'm sure it'll be an absolute headache selecting work, <laughs> given yeah. the, the range of practices, even in this room today. Yeah. Um, um, do you want to talk a bit about just practical things about submitting um, information that is after uh, there's um, a full brief um, on the GoForth Sterling website um, forward slash street stories, um, but um, there's an artist fee for each um, artwork selected um, or for each um, artist selected. Um, so, um, there's a, so there is it's a paid opportunity um, and we've tried to keep it. I mean, it's um, it, it's, um, I think we've kind of tried to keep it a pretty straightforward process. Um, Danielle, do you want to just kind of just update people on that? On the practical? Yes, absolutely. Um, so first things first, um, time is of the essence. <laughs> so we are looking to have our artists selected prior to the Christmas break. Um, that's because, um, I, you know, the, the longest part of the process will actually be the animation side um, and the story writing the copy etc um, and getting the proofs together and you know there's there's a lot of behind the scenes work that we have to go back and forth to all these landlords and make sure that they're happy um, with what we're putting on their windows um, so we are hoping um, that all submissions are with us by 9am on the 14th which is a week on Monday um, and we were we are also hoping to make our decision in the days immediately after that. Um, so it is quite a quick turnaround. Um, and we would be looking to contact, you know, apart from any obviously emergencies or obvious delays, we'd be looking to contact um, the successful artists that week. Um, so that would be weekending the 18th um, of December. So in terms of submitting um, work or um, you know application. Um, as Kevin said, the brief is online, um, but as we've said today, you know, there's not a specific brief in terms of what we're expecting to see. If you want to send us three pieces of work that 
would be um you think that might be relevant or something that we'd be you know interested in please send us it um, via email to it's on it's on the press release and whatnot but it's admin at goforthsterling.co.uk um if you can send us a cv with that it would be much appreciated but if you don't have anything ready don't worry we would love to see art to be honest with you anything that you have um and you know the art can be you know as i said photography storybooks um anything um that you might have um so and we're not necessarily looking for you know something you know that's already sent us very high res you know snap a picture with your phone if it's something you've got um and we'll worry about you know the the, the details after and we just something that would let us see it um, and get a feel for what it is that you do. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it um, in terms of that. Um, anything I've missed, Charlotte? Yeah, no, I think, yeah, that's great as well. You know, when submitting the artwork, it'd be really interesting to see about, um, you know, the kind of themes that you're wanting to explore with that piece. Um, so whether it's, you know, I don't know, human rights, the environment, consumerism, identity, all of those different things, um, just some information on, you know, how a story would come from your piece that relates back to Sterling, just to ensure that we've got the consistency with the Street Stories brand and how that's all tied together. I think that would be, that'd be great. I would also love it if you would be able just to note, because I know I've, I've taken notes as we went, went round um, everyone at the start of the call, but if you could just, even in the, the email body, just put, you know, if you're not from Sterling, but you have a link to Sterling, um, or, you know, you, you had your first date there, anything, if you could just let us know, because obviously um, our, our key thing um, in terms of bid is promoting our city. Um, or a tie to it so you know we're you don't have to be from Sterling um, or even Alison um, if you could send me an email um, with your company name where you're based those information Charlotte and I would love to see that or if, if there are anyone else that you think this might actually be relevant to that hasn't already picked up on um, the press release or the brief or isn't part of this call please share it with them and ask them just to pop us an email even if they just have some questions and they're not quite ready to submit um, the the more um, the more emails we get the better it's great um, you know the more we can communicate with people in this project um, and just another thing I wanted to say is we can only hope um, that our project gains as much attention as you know the the Leicester project gains you know the 21st of August I was scrolling Instagram at 7am checked back so I was like when did I find that um, and that's when I was introduced to the project and BBC had featured it and whatnot and I thought Street Stories what a great brand that's something we want to bring to Sterling um, so if you know if, if we are able to share that as far and wide you know we'll be doing that on the journey with the individual artists and really promoting you um and in any way we can we'd, we'd love to do features into the artists artists that we've chosen or even shortlisted and whatnot and um, we'd be looking to do a story early in the new year prior to the actual project finishing um that you know just even a, an artist spotlight and, and who they are and whatnot and stay tuned to see what how, how we are going to develop their work into this form. That's brilliant. And obviously seeing Sterling will be trying to trying to support that as well, because um, our project is all about raising the visibility of the arts in the area. And um, all our, our programmes are similarly um, available to artists living, working or connected to Sterling in some meaningful way. Um, mm -hmm. So we're here to support with that. Um, and, you know, as um, as Danielle says, it, you know, this might open up other things that happen down the road or might inform what Scene Sterling does or, you know, potentially it sounds like there may be, be other opportunities down the road. So really keen to to, to get um, uh, and support people to put, put themselves forward. And it sounds like, you know, a bit of information about not just your artwork and the process and what it's about, but a bit about yourself and your connection to Sterling would really help help with the selection process, but to ping your application to attention. Um, uh, I guess it would be good. I mean, I think we've covered quite a lot. So I just guess I, I don't want to miss out any questions you as uh, our, our fantastic audience would, would like to pose. So if you've got a question, uh, please feel free to, to come on and, and, and ask Charlotte and Danielle. Um, I'm, I'm sure they'll be really happy to take any questions you've got. Jennifer? Mm. 
Um, is it a static? So, um, uh, is it a static piece of work you're looking for, like something that's not moving? Like because I was thinking of moving image because that's what we're we're doing at the moment. So, um, I take it it's some a, a piece of work that's static. So we we, we could take a still from that. Yes, yes. So it, it will be um, whatever the artwork is will be printed on vinyl and actually put onto the the glass frontage of the shop windows. But where that might work with with your own um, side of things, um, Jennifer, is that if we could have a, a static, for example, um, you know, photograph of what it is you do, and then the animation brings it to life. You know, we might work in. Charlotte will know best in terms of these kind of things, but we might be able to work in actual video footage of that work when it's not frozen in time. Um, so yeah, there's there's no reason why that wouldn't work great. Um, but obviously on natural shop windows, it will be static yeah. um, and, and more of an image. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it, Danielle. So just to kind of give you a little bit of an insight as to how the actual augmented reality function works, um, so as soon as we know the dimensions that we're working to, um, what we do, well, what the software does um, is we sort of place these hidden markers um, and they're sort of situated throughout, you know, the piece of art. Um, and then as soon as that software then, you know, the, the camera actually recognises those markers, that then triggers the augmented reality. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an animation. If it's an existing piece of video, that equally works just as well. Thanks. That's all right. And this is the exciting thing is, is discovering, and I think this will be the exciting thing for artists, discovering how their artwork might transform or be presented in a, just in a different way um, uh, through this kind of project. Um, anyone else got any questions? Rachel? Yeah, no, I was, I was just curious about this. I know you talked about the shop windows. Um, what sort of size do those things get, you know, if, if, if for example, you know, I worked in a smaller scale or had a smaller image. How did, what kind of dimensions are the actual pieces that go up on the, the window? So, the, so they, they vary. We, we, the vinyl will cover all um, glass frontage of these vacant sites. Um, some of the sites are huge. Some of them are quite small. Um, and we will be selecting the artwork with in mind which sites we have permission for. Um, to, to fit them, also to fit them in with the story and the trail. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, we have, we've, we've been floating the idea of um, possibly having, you know, a, a framed um, idea within the window of vinyl that everyone's art sits in, but it, that's not set yet. Um, or it might be multiple things. Um, it, it, there's a variety of different ways that we can do that. Um, but, you know, we, we have, for example, uh, probably absolutely fine sharing which sites we have, but one of the key sites that we've managed to get permission for is the BHS building in Sterling on uh, Port Street, Murray Place at the bottom of King Street. And for anyone that's familiar of that BHS building, it's been empty for a really long time, really long time. Um, so it's such an important site, but actually it's so big that it might actually take up more than one of our eight slots if you like our, our eight shop frontages that we're doing initially we might have more than one artist um occupying that site so so we're just you know we're, we're completely open and um, we want to have the art kind of direct how that's presented and which sites we use thanks Rachel oh, yeah. and I love the idea of like mosaics and mosaicing and and also um, even just looking at your background there, you've got a piece of art that you only see like a macro bit of. So there's probably loads of different ways that I can imagine Charlotte be thinking about how you might play with that kind of medium. And already just thinking about like moving dance, mosaics, portraiture, it just sounds like there could be a huge variety of ways that work is animated. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's really exciting. And, you know, for us as well, it's, it's great just to be able to work um, with a variety of, of different artists on this project and just, yeah, really enhance the Street Stories brand and execute, well, yeah, execute another project um, to this level. So, yeah, it's, it's really exciting for us. Addison. Hi, I'm here with you to go again. I'm always a step ahead of myself. Um, I also own Streetlight Advertising. I have six sheets, Streetlight panels attached to street lights 
throughout Lanarkshire. Um, I don't know if you can see, there's six feet by four feet. I've got them all over uh, North and South Lanarkshire. And I'm just thinking with the likes of Stirling, visitors to Stirling, not just the community, but also the, the holiday makers and people coming to Stirling to attract them. These could actually have the QR code on, you know, promoting, you know, Stirling shopping centre, but also have the QR code with people walking about, you know, Airdrie, Coatbridge, Lanarkshire, East Kilbride, you know, can actually move it on to actually, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but it's actually a benefit that can actually drive people also into Stirling as well. So yeah and talk about. Are, these, really are these Alison the vertical banner um type you know advertising are they are they like you know no 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 your actual advert is encapsulated inside the unit um and did, oh did those require power Alison yes what happens when the street light comes on at night your advert lights up at night so right. your actual advert is encapsulated inside the actual unit so it right. won't blow away, it won't fall off, you know, which is great. Perfect. Um, well, if, said, if you got... send me an email um, and we'll, we'll cover that as well, we'll cover I'll that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think... I think this just illustrates, down, like, the huge variety of, like, of technologies and um, surfaces that can be um, transformed in town centres. And it's about... I think this is how the future is looking in terms of um, moving board signposts, digital spaces. So it's just a really interesting thing for artists to think about. And obviously we're thinking about it in terms of the city center too. A bit of just a little bit of context and background to some of the work that's been going on. Um, so um, I work for Artlink Central and we're contracted to deliver the Scene Sterling program for the partners. With, um, but Artlink Central has been working with the University of Sterling um, with um, the Dementia Services Development Centre and the sort of um, ageing and, and dementia departments, um, with an architect, with Alzheimer's Scotland, and with people living with dementia and their carers, to conduct audits of the city centre to look at how they might be enhanced or improved to be more dementia accessible. And so it was looking at different venues, but also the routes between them and how people navigate the city. And so our group of auditors trained up and they started asking tourists and residents and managers of different spaces about them as well. And they were looking at things like how welcoming um, and inviting the areas are in the city centre. What's the experience of getting there from like the travel hub and key spaces? Um, were there places to seat? Was it um, attractive? And how art might and design might enhance or develop that? So that's been commissioned as a report by Stirling Council, and we've got some fantastic findings, and that's all been shared with the council, with all the different departments involved, and I think as well with GoForth Stirling. So, um, and I know that there's also a city deal, um, which is looking at enhancing aspects of the city, and of course, GoForth Stirling is doing work itself. So there's going to hopefully be a real connection and 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 development of routes active travel routes, walking routes, city centre experience that will begin to come through in the next um, several years. Um, the bid will take a long time to, to kind of turn into actuality, but actually the business cases I think are all, you know, potentially going to be put together in the next six months or so. So, um, and there is a real commitment and drive from um, Seen Sterling Partners and I think from the council itself to look at that and the opportunities for arts and culture to help enhance placemaking and 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 how we can um, not just celebrate the heritage and rich culture of Stirling, which has obviously got the castle and the old walls and all sorts of other elements, but show the vibrancy and, and, and what's going on in our communities. And I think as well, town centres are becoming much more experience driven, um, more destination focused, because there just is a challenge around um, you know, the number of, of businesses and and how businesses are able to operate in town centres. So they won't be the same places. Much more a focus, I think it's fair to say, on sort of livable cities and cities where you can do things. Um, so it's a really interesting time to begin to engage as an artist with the opportunities around that. Anything, and artists get involved in city design in, in so many ways anyway, anything from street furniture design to uh, murals. You'll see murals have been a huge 
uh, there's been a huge, uh, I suppose, resurgence in, in, in murals, which was something that really happened in the 70s and then disappeared um, in the last few years. Um, and also sort of planting projects, sculptural projects and digital projects. So it, it is, I think this is hopefully the start of lots of things to come. I don't know if, Danielle, if you've got anything to add to that or hopefully, hopefully you agree with that as well. <laughs> 100% agree. I think you've covered absolutely everything and, and more, um, Kevin. Yeah, City Deal and all these kind of things, there's, there's so much happening. Um, and as I said, even, even with just street stories, you know, we are starting with eight and we can only hope that this is a project that we can go on and take on. There's, um, unfortunately, I think we're at 45 vacant units in Stirling, a lot of them, you know, not necessarily just within the bid district, um, but there, is, there are a lot of sites there. Um, so, and, and we want to promote them as opportunities. So, you know, I've had the question from a lot of, um, you know, commercial landlords um, or, you know, the commercial agents on behalf of the landlords that have said, so, you know, what, why are you doing this? What if we get um, a tenant? And we're saying, well, great, fabulous. I'm delighted if you get a tenant. I'm happy to take on the cost, obviously, uh, with board sign off and um, to go and move that artwork onto another site. Um, so, you know, if, they get a tenant and if we can present that premise in a much better way within the vinyl, we hope to have, you know, just the, the letting agent or sale agent details um, and, and logo. Um, but, you know, if, if we can, if this reduces um, vacant units, fabulous. We, we can only hope. And there's a lot of other things involved as well in terms of we're not just going to slap some vinyl on the windows of certain sites a lot of them you know maybe need a bit of a repaint around uh, the area and stuff and we're happy to take that on board to make sure that the whole thing um you know all just comes together for the betterment of the city center brilliant and that, and that just shows a really good curatorial kind of mindset around this whole process Jacqueline you've got a question hi sorry I was going to ask in just regards to the submission um obviously if it's like two-dimensional works that's been submitted does it need to be um the images do they need to be um artworks that's in your possession at the moment or can it be past work but obviously you've got and um, you know still have copyright to the to the actual imagery so is it something you know if it's not new work that's been submitted um but like i said it's, it's past work that may, might not actually be something that is in one possession at the moment is that something that can still be submitted if it's something um, that you would be able to get a high enough resolution image of um, and provide us that, you know, we, we would be looking for the artwork, um, Charlotte would confirm, but prior to Christmas, if not very soon in the new year, we would look to have, you know, a high enough resolution image of that artwork so we can just get, get rocking with it. Um, so if it's something that, you know, you don't necessarily have, but you have an image of and you're able to get an image of, perfect. That's that's all, the only thing we really need. Oh, yeah. yeah, it sounds like it might be useful to be able to at least um, get, if you needed to get access to that artwork, to know who had it and to hopefully get like some permission that if you needed to photograph it or digitize it in some way, that you might be able to do that. It might be a useful thing I would suggest if you're proposing doing that to see if that's possible um, or to put in your application that, you've only got access to this image and you know the, the this quality so that at least an informed decision can be made without like kind of going so far down the road and then finding out that there's a challenge there um so that would be my suggestion um I don't know if that is helpful Charlotte as well yeah yeah I mean I'll be completely honest I mean camera phones nowadays are incredible yeah um and we did actually manage to capture you know Good enough quality photos for a lot of the work here just using um a, a, a phone camera um some of the artists did you know have already have those pieces either professionally photographed or you know digitally scanned but it it works absolutely fine um just as long as the lighting and everything's okay it's just due to the size that we're actually blowing you know these pieces up to it's just to make sure that we don't you know lose any of the quality okay any other questions? Yes, Rachel. Just just a quick question on time scale and things, because you're saying you know your deadline's quite soon for getting the artwork because the you know it takes longer to, to do all the digital stuff. What's what's the actual time scale for getting the work on the streets kind of thing and how long once it's there is it intended to be there for? Good questions. 
So um, we are, so we're looking to have the artwork prior to Christmas or very soon after. Um, there will then be eight to 10 weeks, Charlotte, probably, um, to do the actual work, necessary work in terms of animation and proofs and just, you know, double checking permissions and whatnot and making sure that those sites are still there. Um, so, you know, our, our original goal was February. That's, we're kind of teetering into March now. Um, so I hope, fingers crossed and sure Charlotte's the exact same that we have this on the streets and um, on those vacant sites installed um, within March um, and in terms of how long it's up is you know as far as I'm concerned indefinite you know we have um, you know sites that may um, you know have new tenants or owners quickly um, we're obviously at a, a, a kind of uncomfortable stage just now where you know, new leases are not being taken so frequently. Um, and the likes of the BHS site, um, you know, has been empty for years. So if, as long as it looks clean and tidy, um, we may require a reprint of the same site and keep that there. But as long as you are happy for it to stay there indefinitely, um, we, we'd love to have, you know, because we're, we're obviously starting with eight sites and then we are going to add on. So, you know, hopefully. Um, so yeah, the, the longer it can stay there um, while that site is unoccupied, the better. Any other questions? Angeline, I think, had a question. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, um, I was just wanting to add, ask um, exclusivity of the image. So would you hope to just have that exclusively and so the artist wouldn't be able to use that image for anything else? And also as well, would there be sound on the app? So is it possible to add sound onto your um, piece of art? Gosh, you've got good questions, people. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, yeah, really, really good question. So no, we don't require any form of exclusivity um, on the piece. It, you know, the IP completely remains with you at all times. It's just, you know, a case of us repurposing it for this project. Um, yeah, sound, we do include sound as part of the animation. Um, so just as an example, we worked um, closely with Lucy Stevens. So a lot of her work um, is focused around endangered birds. So as part of that animation, we actually brought her artwork to life with sort of bird sounds and sort of, yeah, real sort of naturist sort of theme sounds as well. Um, so yeah, sound is part of that. That's something that will um, develop as part of the animation. Thank you. Thank you. And so essentially you'd be gifting a license to reproduce the work and include it in on the shop and any any publicity. That would, and the original art, artwork and IP would remain with yourself and you could do what you liked with the artwork beyond this. Okay. Really it's around Can the I limited just... license. Jennifer? Yeah. Um, does the, because obviously the sound will completely change like we work with music and creating ours. So do we have the opportunity to be able to work with you with the sound that we have created that? Because obviously from our perspective, it really would change the artistic, like it would change the artistic concept, you know, like the different, obviously the different sounds. So if we, um, if for instance, we were picked, would we be able to say, well, actually we created it with this music and get that. Yeah, any any content that's you know already been created, um, yeah, you know, supply that to us, and, and our in in house team will sort of work that into the animation. That was it was exactly the same, you know, with with Lucy. So I'm, I'm glad that you guys have mentioned that actually. Um, her work it is you know sort of an audio visual experience. Um, so yeah, like I say, she actually provided us with those specific bird sounds to then help um, with that actual animation for her piece. That's brilliant, thank you. And um, uh, here's just a, another quick question. So if you um, took the QR code, would you be able to then go away and you would have to link with that image to be able to see the content. So it's something that's very place focused. Yeah, um, so it wouldn't be, uh, it, you would only experience it in the space, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. So on the actual unit itself, we have, um, it's like a floor marker. You've probably seen them in and around city centers, the circular markers, but this will be branded as a street stories foot marker. So that will just indicate roughly where you should stand to actually activate the AR, just so the software can pick up the triggers. Um, so what you would do, each, um, each unit will have its own individual QR code, just so the software recognizes which piece you're actually trying to view. Um, you would scan the QR code, you would then go onto the Street Stories app, you literally open up the camera, hold it up, 
Yeah. And yeah, that's that's where it is for life. Yeah. Great. Any more questions? I recognise we're coming up to about eleven o'clock now. So um, we've, it's been an absolutely fantastic conversation, and so much great. You know, so many interesting ideas and, and opportunities kind of coming forward. So I think we've got a real sort of sense of of some of the possibilities with this project, and you can see why it's so exciting with the, the augmented reality and the sort of curated approach. Um, it's sort of, because um, we've I, I've certainly seen, you know, as as um, Danielle has mentioned before, different ways that this has been done. But this feels like a really, um, you know, coherent, exciting, um, innovative opportunity. Um, so I'm certainly hopeful that some of you will, will put yourselves and your artwork forward um, and, and want to get involved. And um, I'm sure if anybody's got any other questions that come later on, you can, uh, drop an email to Danielle's team at um, at the bid, and uh, I'm sure she'd try and help as well. Um, uh, if there's any last questions, I, I think now it's time to get them in, and uh, and then hopefully we can uh, uh, you know let you all get on and and start thinking about what you might do. Uh, that's it. Well, thank you all for coming. Please do. I've got your Eventbrite details, so we may let you know about other callouts and opportunities coming up in the future um and just opt out if you're unhappy about that um keep tuned to the scene sterling website for things coming up um and uh all the different uh projects that are going on um but i just want to say a huge thank you not just to yourselves for coming along and engaging with us and asking these fantastic questions we'll post this up online to hopefully help other people as well but thank you so much to charlotte and to danielle for joining us and jika joining us today really appreciate your time and thank you for inviting us to be a part of helping to kind of make this get this off the ground and to launch it um and um you know really excited to see how that that develops and um it, you know and hopefully um see some of you all um in the future in terms of where it's going to and what the artwork's going to be and who's selected so thank you very much thank you everyone really appreciate it i really look forward to seeing seeing anything that's submitted thank you Thanks, everybody. And, and thank you to Kevin, because you oh, have no facilitated this absolutely wonderfully. <laughs> and we love what you're doing at Scene. <laughs> right. Thanks, everybody. Nice I'll let you go. Bye. Have Bye. a good weekend. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.